Hey there, Thomas from Bricks here. In today's video, I'm gonna introduce you to the new menu builder available in Bricks 1.8, which is actually a whole suite of five new elements that allow you to create fully customizable, responsive, accessible nav menus and site navigations in Bricks. So I already pinned them up here on the left-hand side. You can see in the elements panel, uh, we now got the enough nestable element. That's going to be the one that's going to contain all of our um, menu builder elements. So uh, previously with the enough menu, which is just basically a populated WordPress menu where you had a lot of different controls. So you can change the styling for desktop and mobile. We now have this um, nestable element. So similar to uh, the way we uh, transitioned from having a plain slider where you could just... Um, had a really rigid structure on how you could extend the slider. Now we have a nestable slider right, that you can populate anywhere you want, or same goes with the tabs um, or the accordion element. You can now do the same for the NAV menu as well using the NAV nestable element. Meaning you can also, of course, put in any other elements. If you want to put in a search here on your mobile menu or your logo, or you want to put a form in there, um, you can do this um, as you like. There's no limitation here. Um, the four other elements, in this case, the text link, drop down, toggle, and off canvas are made for the new menu builder, but you can also use them standalone outside of it. So of course, if you want to put a text link anywhere on your site, you can do this. You don't need to put this inside of enough nestable. Same goes for the drop down and the off canvas and toggle. If you want to show some content off canvas, for example, maybe you have a form that you want to show and you want to slide in when someone clicks a toggle. Um, of course, something similar could also be set up um, with a pop-up, but depending on your use case and the user experience, definitely you can also use the off-canvas element here. In our case, in our context, we're going to use the off-canvas to create our unique mobile menu, which brings me to the next point. And that's just not that we only have five new elements. We also introduce a lot of new core features in regards to uh, the menu builder. And the first one being here, the ability to create mega menus using the drop-down element. Also, that's just a single click on a setting. You can turn any drop-down into a mega menu, and then you can populate the mega menu content like any other container, or div, or block element. You can just create a column layout, which, which is actually what we did here. I'm gonna show you on the front end in a minute. And then we have the ability to create multi-level menus. And this is really handy when you have a deeply nested menu structure, let's say you have a drop down and then you have a drop down within a drop down within a drop down. It's really handy to have in place to uh, yeah, use the real estate, especially on a small screen um, effectively and to prevent any like weird layouts. Um, although Bricks has some built-in logic to uh, recalculate and reposition the drop downs if it exceeds the viewport, it's still, um, yeah, this is a great way to basically uh, deal with this as well. Then, like already mentioned, we can now build unique mobile menus using the off-canvas and toggle elements. And of course, accessibility, that's a big factor here as well. And yeah, that's something also that we introduced this menu builder already from the get-go um, using all of the typical uh, keyboard um, keys that you would use, like tab, enter, space, and escape. I'm going to show you this, and it's also probably how I'm going to interact with the menu mostly on the front end. So you can also see how... Um, your visitors would use it that um, yeah, depend on this kind of accessibility features or that just really heavy keyboard users like myself. So yeah, I hope this also helps give you a better intro, uh, introduction to uh, how to navigate through your own websites and maybe also um, websites in general. All right, let's jump to the front end and okay, let's have a look on our menu. and. Did you know what I'm actually talking about here? This enough nestable, if I select it, you can see this is the one up here. I just um, yeah, wrap this in a container, which has like light gray background color. So you can see it here as well. Okay, let's go to the front end. Let's click in front of our um, menu. Let's hit the tab, key to, the tab key to navigate through our new menu. And the first um, focusable element in focus is our text link. This one has an icon as well. This is the Bricks logo as an SVG file. And if I hit tap again, it's going to bring me to my text link. This one doesn't have any icon, just a simple text link. And then we hit tap again. 
And we now focus on our drop down toggle button. And yeah, if we hit enter or space, we're gonna open up our drop down and we're gonna see our drop down content. So if I hit enter now, you can see that our drop down content slides in from the bottom like this. This is because I've set a little bit of a transform um, setting here. So it's gonna, I think, go up 15 pixels or so. So you have this nice little um, effect that it's coming in from the bottom here. This little carrot that you can see, also something I created just using the settings, everything visually um, very easy. I'm gonna show you that in a minute as well. And if we now hit tap again, we're gonna enter our drop down content here. So you can see I hit tap and it's gonna bring the focus to my first drop down content element. If I click again, tap brings me to the second one. And this one being the last focusable element inside of this drop down. If I hit tap again, it's gonna close my tab, uh, sorry, it's gonna close my drop down content and it's gonna bring the focus to the next focusable element, which is the drop down button of our mega menu. And if you would inspect the source code, you can also see that it also um, sets the area expanded HTML attributes for accessibility accordingly to false once we uh, use the keyboard navigation. Or of course, if you would also click on this button as well, um, it's gonna set it to false. And when we open it, it's gonna set it to true, right? So now I click here, um, let's have a look at our mega menu. Let's just hit space. And you can see that we now opened up our mega menu. And yeah, this drop down. we have a mega menu setting here. You just need to uh, flip the switch to enable the mega menu. And then you can just put inside of this uh, mega menu drop down content, anything you want. In my case here, I did, I went for a little, three column layout, but like I said, it could be anything else. You're not limited in any way. In the same way that you can design your layouts, you could just create, go with the same kind of complexity with your mega menus. Let's hit tab to see what we get here in terms of the focus. In my case, it's gonna focus on the first query loop result, which is this post here in the middle. Now you can also see the focus outline here. In my case, I have this one pixel dashed red um, focus outline. Of course, I just put this setting in here for the video for demonstration purpose. So you can clearly see where the focus is. This is not a default. Um, you can change this in the theme styles under typography, but definitely make sure to not disable it. Um, although maybe you think it's some, because I sometimes read this, um, users mentioning that it looks a bit ugly, but for people who depend um, yeah, on this kind of visual Q, um, we have some visual impairments. It's um, vital that you have this kind of accessibility features in place and that you just don't um, disable or remove them in terms of, you know, like a clean design or something like that. All right, let's just hit tap again. And we now get to the second, the third, the fourth, and then to our button here. I think we have got three more to focus. So let's just hit focus again. And you can now see that the focus is here on our little dot. And the focus is here because this is a button HTML tag, right? So this is by default um, a focusable element in the same way that a link is a focusable element or a text input, for example, right? So I'm gonna hit tap again, tap again, and now we are on the last um, focusable element inside of this mega menu. So what happens if we tap again, our mega menu is automatically being closed in the same way that our normal mega menu here was closed before, right? So now we are arrived at the last kind of drop down that I'm going to show you, which is this multi level drop down. So we're going to hit enter here, and you can see that now our drop down um, yeah, came sliding in from the right. And you can already see here on this indicator that in this case now we actually have a drop down within a drop down, or how you would call it in terms of the WordPress logic, probably. We have our top level. And then we have the sub menu, and then we would have a sub menu within a sub menu, right? Um, I'm just gonna call this drop down, and then we got a sub drop down, right? Or inner drop down or child drop down. And I'm gonna tap through this as well, because uh, I wanna show you how it looks if I navigate to the next level just using, um, again, tap and enter. So I'm bringing focus on my drop down button. I'm gonna hit enter, and now you can see that I navigate into my second level. And at the top here now, I also have this back 
um, text link. And this one is added dynamically via JavaScript. You can change the text here and you can also style the uh, typography and the background. Um, yeah, this kind of stuff to uh, customize this backlink to your liking. And yeah, we can just keep going like this. I think I created three levels. So let's just go to the next one. This is level three. Yeah, and you can see um, there's nothing else here. I have um, those two links, but I don't go further. Um, of course, you could add 10 levels or 20 levels for this kind of multi-navigation, uh, multi-level um, drop-down navigation, but it's, yeah, of course, not really practical. You probably wouldn't go deeper than two levels, but it's possible. If you want to, um, if you have some sort of structure like that, you can do it. And I'm going to hit enter to go back because you can see that the focus here is on my back um, link. Okay, now I'm level two. Hit enter again. Now I'm on level one. And now we're going to close everything off with hitting the escape key, which is now bringing the focus to our drop down toggle button, right? I can just navigate through this, just using tab or tab shift to go back, right? You can just navigate through it like this. And this is the accessibility in regards to all of those drop downs, to the links and everything else that's focusable inside of your new menu. Okay, let's have a look maybe inside the builder as well. Um, I'm not gonna recreate everything here, of course, now. So I'm just gonna show you how I've set it up. Um, the first nav link, for example, is just the text here and then I'm linking this. Well, I'm not linking it to anything here. I'm just put the pound sign here. If you would put in a link, make sure that you would select if it's a page or post on your site, um, don't copy and paste the URL. Make sure that you would select the internal post page and then select the page from here because yeah, if your link structure changes, then you would have to manually update this all the time. It's not very practical as well and you can create um, broken links like this. It's not nothing really specific to bricks. It's just uh, a general um, thing to keep in mind when working in WordPress. Uh, the icon here, in my case, like I said, I got an SVG and with a width of 24 by 24. Then I could set the color and background color. This is just really more if you would work with an icon or an SVG that doesn't have a background color. Mine already has one, so it's yeah probably actually not the best way to demonstrate. But yeah, of course, I went for the Bricks logo here. Um, you can set the gap between the icon and the link text, right? I can increase this just like that. And yeah, that's everything to this text link. I just named this one here enough link, but you can always see um, also, when you work with templates and bricks or you use third party templates um, and they would normally give it appropriate name to easier identify it, you can always see which element is behind it by just hovering over the icon here in the structure panel, right? So this is a text link, which means it's this element here, right? Um, second one, just being a text link, so nothing really to explain here. Now our first drop down, and you can also see as soon as I select the drop down here, it automatically shows me the drop down content because we also got some styles here for the content. Although we have the content where you could also set um, additional styles, but um, this is a little bit more accessible and we can provide you with some settings that allow you to target, for example, the uh, yeah individual icons, items inside of your drop down content like this padding per icon per item <laughs> sorry um, that's the transform that I talked about earlier on the front end where we have this little uh, let me show you again you can see how it basically is moving up a little bit so this is basically accomplished using the transform on the y-axis uh, so initially it's 15 pixel down and then once it's open or you hover over it it's gonna go and it's gonna dock onto basically um, yeah, this line here below the uh, drop down text. I will put a little border here around my content as well. As you can see, I have this border radius, and then I changed the uh, typography color to something light because my background is dark. So that's the content setting here. Um, the carrot we got here, it's 10 pixel. If you would just simply uh, change it to zero, you would not have any, well, you would not change it to zero, you would just simply remove it, but you can adjust the size as you like. By default, there's no 
carry it here and just put it for demonstration purpose. Um, if I would just delete this, you can see that's how it looks by default. Um, if you want to bring it back or if you want to edit initially, you would just put a size in here and then change the color. I'm just going to put a red here so you can see how it looks um, by default. And now I can change the positioning in my case. No, I want to just have it 20 from the left. And then I could also flip it around by rotating it 180 degree. Looks like this. And then I could also give it a different background color. So I basically have now the inverse effect that I had previously with my carrot here on the front end, right? So that's an easy way to set it up. And that's just basically, yeah, in the most simplest way how you would go about creating your drop downs. Um, as soon as I go outside of this drop down, let's just say I select my nuff link, it automatically closes it in the builder as well, right? Oh, show it. Um, and now we click on our mega menu. And you can see now here how it's set up as well. Like I said, um, let me close this. So you can see here the drop down content contains three columns, which I also just created using this layout um, inserter here. That's part of Bricks core. And the first column containing our heading, two icon boxes. Second column is a query loop. So I have four posts in here and then just an image with the featured image and then the post title. So that's what you see here and some styling. That's column two and column three. So heading, testimonial and the button. Like I said, with any other layout on your site, you can now populate this mega menu any way you want. No limitation here. Um, but you have to, of course, um, be careful how you're going to go about also styling this inside of your mobile menu. All right, that's the mega menu, how it looks inside the builder and how to activate it. I almost forgot. Um, you can see here that we got a mega menu and the multi-level um, control groups. So all you need to do here is just to enable the mega menu and it turns into the mega menu like this. Now, by default, of course, because it's a mega menu, it's going to cover the entire available width of the viewport. So it goes from the left to the right. If you want to contain it and make it, um, for example, uh, adjust in width and position so it aligns with your container, what you can do, you can just go to your container. Of course, for the container, you will probably have most of the time the same width, but so you don't need to copy the element ID. You could just use the uh, BRXE container class, but yeah, this is also one way to go about it. Say like I'm um, copy here. Uh, copying the element ID, then I would go to my mega menu and I would tell, I would just paste in the CSS selector here and then uh, the position and the width of the mega menu is going to be recalculated and should, if everything goes well now, um, yeah, be aligned here with my container. So let's just paste it. Let's see what's going to happen. And you can now see that my mega menu is contained within yeah, my container, basically. It's not inside in terms of the positioning, but um, yeah, it looks, um, that's basically how it's going to look in terms of the layout. Yeah. If we go to the front end as well, to show you, it now looks like this instead of covering the entire available width, which is the default. Now we go to our drop down menu, the last one where we enable the multi-level and the way to do this is just simply to go here to multi-level click enable and that's that part now in order to see the second level i would just click um, you can just click here and now you can see the second level so first level second level they are shown here in the builder at the same time so you can also style them accordingly without having to navigate through all the different levels right um, if i go back to uh, the top level I can now change this text as well. Um, instead of calling it back, I can just call it uh, go back, right? Then it's gonna look like this. Um, might need to reload here. takes a little bit.
Yeah, now you can see the new text go back and I can also change the background. I can make this red. I can change the typography as well. I'm gonna make this larger, just like that. And then I can save it. That's the multi-level. That's all you really need to do there. There's nothing else to adjust that you have to adjust here to make this work inside of Bricks. All right, those are the different kind of dropdowns that you can create, just a normal dropdown, then our mega menu and the multi-level as well. And of course the default, you can also basically nest this as deep as you want. Um, but like I said, especially when you work with deeply nested st structures, um, a lot of the time you will probably want to pick the multi-level dropdown instead. All right, let's have a look at the mobile menu, how it looks by default. And that's actually similar to the NAV menu element that we already have in Bricks. I would just simply select my NAV nestable. And then here on the left-hand side, you can see the mobile menu control group. And we've got this little toggle here because of course, inside the mobile menu itself, now because it's a nestable element, you can just extend it and put any other elements inside of it. We wanna make sure that we can just keep it open and we can just keep working on it while we view it. But once we're done, we don't want to see it. We wanna continue editing the rest of our page, right? So if we enable this, you can see how we can switch between those two states. So this is the desktop, right? I can see all my text uh, in one line. And here it's now basically the enough items right? This is the NAV items container, um, which is also a special element in regards to the NAV nestable. You can also not delete this. Uh, so this is not a bug. If you just select this individually, it's not deletable on purpose. Um, so just that you know. And then I can also continue styling this as I want to, uh, to align the items, for example. And also similar to the NAV menu element, I can select the breakpoint at which I want to start showing this on the front end. And by default, it's a mobile landscape, but you can change this to your liking. Um, we should actually navigate to this mobile landscape breakpoint so you can see the toggles because the toggles right now, as you can see, they are here in our structure, but you cannot see them on the canvas. And that's because we are viewing the desktop menu right now. And we only want to show the mobile menu on the mobile landscape breakpoint or smaller. So let's just go there. First, we go to tablet portrait. We can see there's um, still only the desktop menu available. So we go further down to the mobile landscape. And now we can see our toggle. And this toggle is the one after our NAV items. Because like I said, the NAV items container itself um, holds all of the mobile menu elements. So uh, in order to uh, trigger this open and show this open, we actually position it after the NAV items. And we can also change the icon here. Um, or you can set an animation. There are all kinds of animations here. And then you can change the area label depending on what you want to toggle. Because like I said, toggle element itself is not limited to uh, the enough nestable, you can use this outside of the enough nestable as well, especially when working um, together with the off canvas element. You don't need to change anything here um, in terms of the settings when you use it in this default context because um, the logic is already baked into bricks, also the accessibility as well. Um, so yeah, when you also insert a new enough nestable element, this is also the default structure that you will see. So the default structure when you insert this element is going to be NAV nestable, NAV items, NAV link, NAV link, drop down. And then those two toggles. Those other uh, mega menu and multi level menu is just something that I created now for this video. So if we go to our toggle menu open, yeah, we could customize it. I'm going to just keep it as it is. And this toggle close button is the one that we can see. Let me go to the NAV nestable and open our menu is the one that I can see now inside of my default mobile menu at the very bottom, which is this one. And because it's inside of this enough items um, element, it already knows that it's supposed to close the uh, mobile menu when we click on it. Or of course, because it's fully accessible, you can also just hit escape um, to close this mobile menu as well.
picture, we have a look at the front end. So you can also see how it looks on mobile. Um, let's go here. So we're already in mobile landscape, as you can see. Um, so this is desktop, right? This is mobile now. And you can see the toggle. Now, if I click on it, you can see the mobile menu using the default structure that I also have on desktop. And you can also see that it automatically gives focus to our toggle here. So if I would hit enter now, I can close my mobile menu. It automatically brings the focus back to my toggle that I used to open it. So I can just continue navigating um, in the page structure. And yeah, especially if the menu would be not at the top of the page, it's going to be really handy. So the user who is um, depending on the keyboard accessibility features can just continue going through your site um, without any breaks or weird jumps in between, right? So I can open it, close it just like that. And that's the default mobile menu. Now, if you want to not use this at all, and you just want to create your own mobile menu, then we can now have a look at the off canvas element, which again, it's not limited to the mobile builder itself. You can use this outside of it as well. Um, in combination with the toggle element. So what I would do, I would now go back in here. And first of all, I would close this. I don't, I want to see my desktop. I want to see the closed mobile menu, so I should say. And we're now going to use the off canvas element in order to create a custom mobile menu. So what we don't need anymore, really, you could just delete this is this toggle close because we're not gonna use the default mobile menu. Um, I'm going to keep it here. It also doesn't really negatively affect anything in my um, demonstration here. But I would set the mobile menu to say we now oh, we can keep mobile landscape. We want to show this handbook toggle on mobile landscape, right? So we can keep this. But we're going to do now is that we're going to insert the off canvas element. In my case, I'm inserting this after the enough items. And then you can just put anything you want instead of your off canvas. So you can see here, this is my um, content. Similar to the Nuff Nest, the Builder Off Canvas also has the same kind of builder feature. You can just keep it open so it doesn't just close by itself as long as you uh, um, yeah, basically want to edit and just drag elements inside of it. And then I can go here into my off canvas content again also, which is not deletable by itself because that is this kind of wrapper that we just need to have inside of here. Um, then I can continue editing. By default, it has a basic text and a toggle icon. Um, this toggle also, because it knows it's placed inside of the off canvas element, if you would click it, it would close the off canvas. If we click on the backdrop here, so outside of the content, it would also close the off canvas as well. And I can just keep going here. And let's just say I want to have a button here. I can just add a button. I want to have an icon. I'll put in another icon. Yeah, or delete it. And then I could just align my content if I want to, just like that. I can change, put a little default space in between and I can create my off canvas here can contain a menu can contain anything else that you want, right? So that's the off canvas. And let's have a look at the front end how it would actually look like and work like if we use it. Let's refresh. And let's hit click on here. And it's going to open up the default mobile menu because we actually didn't uh, disable it, but this is okay because what I want to show you is how you can also tweak the toggle to make sure that it's going to target our off canvas element. So what I'm going to do here now is that I'm going to select my off canvas and then I'm going to similar to what we did before with the mega menu when we copied the element ID from the container. I'm now going to do the same for the off canvas element. I'm just going to copy the ID and then I go to my toggle to toggle open the mobile menu. In my case, you could just also rename this now. Of course, you could just say um, toggle off canvas, right? And what I'm going to do here for the CSS selector, I'm going to paste in 
the ID of my off canvas element. Let's save it. Let's go to the front end. If we click now on our toggle, you can see that the off canvas is sliding in. If we click again on our backdrop, it closes. And you can also see that once we open the off canvas, the focus is automatically on the first focusable element inside of it. In my case now, this is gonna be that close um, toggle and if I would click it by hand, it would also close it just like that. And we can also change the effect of our off canvas by changing the effect setting. So instead of sliding it in, we can just select offset. And let's have a look what this is actually gonna do on the front end. It's basically offsetting the entire page. So if I'm gonna slide in my off canvas from the left, you will see how the whole page is gonna move towards the right now. So if I click here, no, I think I need to refresh, <laughs> sorry. If I click here now, you can see how everything, including the content here is just gonna move. Um, yeah, the same amount, the width of the off canvas, it's gonna move to the right. If I would position my off canvas on the right hand side, it would basically slide, fade in a slide in from the right as well, or from the top or from the bottom, depending on how you set it up. And Let's close it. Let's unselect it. Let's have a look at our structure. Looks good. Looks good. Let's go to the desktop. And that's basically it. That's how you can create menus um, in Bricks going forward using the new menu builder, taking advantage of all of those five new elements, the nav nestable, the text link, drop down, toggle and off canvas. Like I said, you can customize this any way you want. If you wanna put in a search element, a button um, or anything else inside of your menu, possible now, especially when you work with the mega menu, you're gonna probably use a lot of different elements, maybe query loops even, as you could see what we did in our little demo here, using the mega menu, which you can also position relative to um, a certain other element on your page. You can use the multi-level feature in Bricks as well. And everything comes with built-in accessibility. You can use the off canvas and toggle to create unique mobile menus. I know this was a lot of information. I try to be swift. Um, at the same time, of course, I also want to make sure to uh, convey and share all the information that are necessary in order to really take advantage of all the features that we have. Um, as always, because we just introduced this feature, we really depend and appreciate every feedback you can submit. Ideally, if you just head over to a forum at forum.bricksbuilder.io, that would be great. So we can continue the conversation there and yeah, appreciate um, all the time that you took to uh, watch this video and I hope you have a good menu building experience with Bricks. All right, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.